So if you're trying to work with live sessions, there are some better practices that I have learned along the years, and I'm sure you will find them useful. Last weekend, I had to record 14 musicians on site for five tracks during two days. So I had to deal with a lot of big logistics, 14 musicians, and everyone had their own mix and it was crazy, but I'm sure there's something you can learn from that experience. So straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and let's talk about some better practices for dealing with live sessions. Okay, so once you're in Reaper, you might want to add X amount of tracks that you will be recording. In my case, they were 32. And remember to take advantage of the audio on preferences and edit names map. I have my claret connected at the moment, so these names won't match what I recorded that day. I was using an X32, so everything was named properly or accordingly to the X32. That way, whenever I select all of my tracks and use the action cascade input, run the action it asks me to start on input one and it's going to make all of the tracks get their proper names as i map them so they match my external console where i'm preamping everything from where i'm sending the, the personal monitoring for every single musician and now you can just copy down here every single name of every single track so there's a smaller margin of error when you're making your session and everything matches from that you can start handling much better your session you can start making groups for for example, and this is the session where I recorded. So not only I'm taking advantage of the autocolor feature on Reaper, that's an extension, where I have every single track name giving me a specific color so I can work a lot faster. I'm taking advantage of the grouping for selected tracks. So as you can see, I'm using drums, percussions, strings, keys, guitars, background vocals, claps, uh, because it's flamenco. And this is really important. I have one single group active for recording. This is because whenever I want to set one track for recording or one group of instruments for recording, I want everything ready. Whenever I arm any of my tracks, all of my session is armed, so I never miss any single track when, while I'm recording. On the other hand, whenever I'm making small balances and checking groups of instruments, the faders are tied, the solo buttons are tied, and the mute buttons are tied. You can manage all of this on the grouping settings. You could also add the media eraser edit lead and follow so you can edit this together, but that comes in the edit stage. Once you have every single thing armed, please remember that this zero doesn't necessarily mean or isn't necessarily the same clipping point of your audio interface or your digital converter. For some reason, some products don't match exactly this. I don't know why, I don't have an explanation, but it just happens. So you have to learn how to read and how to listen for that clipping of your digital converter that just makes and it sounds horrible because it's a square wave. In my case, I have the RedNet X2P that uses Dante protocol. So whenever that clips, it really clips. It sounds like so nasty. So you know you're way too hot coming into your computer. My tip number three will be to record everything from the tests of the musicians so you don't miss anything and you can actually start checking levels and look for noises in your cables and microphones, check face, check polarity. Remember that you can just click this little button in this skin. I have linked it in my description so you can start checking the face relationship of your microphones in case you don't ha have enough time to move them. And I'm leaving myself markers along the session so I always know what I'm looking at. For example, this is the first test of the first song that's called Mala Mujer. And I'm using, right-clicking right here, the insert tempo time signature feature or action. So this way I have every single track within their own tempo. I also have their own time signature because not all of music is in 4-4. I'm matching that by recording the click. This sounds so silly, but down here I recorded the click. That way, whenever I have to edit something, I can actually see if people were ahead of the click, behind of the click, or even if I was in sync with my click. This looks like this because I wasn't sending the click from this session, I was sending the click from another computer. So I like to record the click with the musicians in time all together. That way I can edit according to this click. I can just notch every single track. So now it's on the grid and the click is always on the grid as you can see. This saves me so much time for later stages like editing. 
So I have everything, everything, everything in place. I keep on moving forward during the session. Remember that I use these actions so I can navigate a lot faster my session. Go to next marker project end and go to previous marker project start using my point and comma. That way I can navigate much faster within take one, take two. And I'm also leaving myself some markers of noises that I think I listen and I want to go back and check when I have time. And I have everything, everything in place. That way I will never lose control of my session. After this, I make a save as once the recording is done. This has everything just as, if, just as it was recorded. So I want to mangle everything on another session and don't mess this one up. So I made a save as. And here you can see I have a lot more markers. And here I have some regions also going on. The regions I was using them to name better my takes and I can later on use that to name my exports properly. Not only that, I also took advantage of the air within the room and this helps a lot for editing purposes. I learned this in post-production and classical music and on-site recording. Record some air, try to get the least background noise possible. I'm going to level up the next section so you can listen to the room tone. And I also recorded some impulses of the place where I was uh, using a snare drum that I had. Because this way I can import this into a convolution reverb if necessary and try to better edit whatever went wrong if something went wrong or in case I need to add convol to add overdubs because the production needed it and I can just place it right on the place where the musician was sitting. So this is at the back in one side and this is the other side at the back and this is the center at the back. So I could just load any of these impulses so I could place some overdub if necessary. In this one, I actually cleaned up the beginnings and the ends of the recordings. I only left, for example, the claps right here. So the people from video can sync their video to audio or the other way around. And this is more of a cleanup around the edges. So I only have the most important things. And from here, I'm going to export the multi-track. For this, we're we are going to go into render to file. And I'm going to use the region render matrix and I'm going to use the selected regions feature. And for example, I just want to use the first song, Mala Mujer, takes one, two and three and export all of my drums, right? So I go like this and this is going to make three times five, 15 audio files, 15 render files. I'm going to take advantage of the normalization limit fade. I'll deactivate normalization. I will set up a protection peak just in case at minus 0.3 and I will set up a small fade in of 50 seconds with a fade out of 150 milliseconds. I will name every single file project information region first because that will take the name of the song and the take name. Then I will use the track number so I can just look at the folder in my computer and have everything organized just as I have it right now and just import it and it will work and project information track. That way I have the name. So this, for example, will be Soy Eso y Más, take three, track number two and track Cajón, for example. I save my settings. I export this with 32-bit with floating point. So in case something was wrong, it's not going to clip. I will embed the tempo so I can recover the tempo of every single take and every single song. And I will embed the markers because those are all of my cues of what's going on everywhere right after that i will make a new save as and i will have this clearer i'm not finished uh session where i will only have one big region that's going to take a whole song and then i will have take one take two take three and i will have my audio files imported like just as clean as i need them just lasting whatever files i need to let me show you for example a little bit of one of the songs so you more or less get an idea of how the rooms sounded So once I have everything like this and I still have to clean up this session, 
I have the three takes of everything. I will start building a vertical version of this where I will just load all of these items and implode them as takes. So I have everything of the same length and whenever I need to start editing into something, I can just edit from another take or take something from another take if necessary. And I will start building my mixing session from this. Probably in the editing stage, they will take a lot longer because we might have to overdub something or whatever might have gone wrong or something that I thought that would be nice in the end to add. But some things won't really sound right, probably because time is not just on time. So maybe your compressors or the group is not feeling really, really tight. And that has nothing to do to do with your actual processing it probably has to do more with the timing of the musician sometimes so just work with uh, with whatever you've got you have to do some rough mixing around this you can start making your auxiliary tracks your bosses and i routed every single folder as you can see on my left side to these three to these five buses that will be one track every single one of them i will open the, autom the automation menu and as you can see i'm automating the mute of every single song that way when i'm here i'm only managing the level of the first track i go here i'm only managing the level and so on that way i can do all of my processing down here in the audio tracks and I can start automating as necessary using the buses and auxiliary tracks and managing the level of the overall track using this right here. And now I have a big mixing story session of my whole, whole live session that I recorded. That's probably going to be around 30 minutes long. So that's a way of handling a live session that's much faster and you don't have to start opening and closing another sessions. I tried doing this once with the sub projects, but since you have to render every time you go out of the sub project and the processing will probably be the same in pretty much every single song and the only things that you will be varying will be levels, you might just want to automate everything once you have proper starting point for all of your live session, right? For example, this fourth song is going to be really low level wise. So I might just want to either match a little bit the gain of the media items or just get around with it with some automation, but I still have to listen to every single thing that I do beforehand. Be sure to check my other videos where I talk also on how to do this kind of faster automation things where I can just go one or the other. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and leave a comment, leave any question. I'll be more than happy to help. And as usual, and straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for watching.